The moment I stepped through the doorway, it became obvious that something was bothering Dala. With her hands clasped together, she stood in the living room, shifting her weight from one foot to the other. After 24 years of marriage, I had seen her do this enough to recognize there was an issue. Usually, Dalla arrives home from her dental work about half an hour before me and uses that time to start dinner and change out of her work clothes. However, she was still dressed for work today, and there were no pleasant scents coming from the kitchen. It's obvious that something's amiss when Dalla deviates from her regimen. Dick, we need to talk, she said, plainly frightened. I sat down on a chair and answered calmly. Of course, dear. She suddenly had the upper hand. What's wrong? I don't know how to say this, Dick, so I'll just come out with it. I want a separation, and possibly a divorce, she declared with surprising boldness. I think a trial separation would be best, but I want it to be understood that it could lead to a divorce later on. All right, dear, I responded calmly. I'll move out immediately. As I stood and headed for the bedroom, I caught the sight of Dalla's jaw nearly hitting the floor. She was probably expecting a lot more discussion, maybe even some questions. But one thing I always enjoyed during our marriage was doing the unexpected. She was the predictable one, not me. If my calm acceptance surprised her, my swift return to the living room with two large, packed suitcases practically floored her. I set the luggage by the door, pulled a slip of paper from my pocket, and handed it to Dalla. Here's my new address and phone number. You can still call me on my cell. I only have one condition for this separation. If you sleep with anyone else, we go straight to divorce. If this is just about finding yourself, we can reconcile when you figure things out. But I won't tolerate being used with no consequences while you decide if you want me back. Before she could respond, I pulled out my phone and dialed a number. Hello, Becky. It's Dick. How would you like to meet me for dinner on Friday? I asked. You know the answer to that, Dick. Becky laughed. I'll be there with bells on, though I might forget the underwear. Grinning, I hung up the phone, grabbed my suitcases and casually walked to my car, leaving Dalla standing there, speechless and unable to respond. Becky and I had a lovely steak dinner, nothing too fancy, and afterward, we went back to my flat. Just as she was bringing me to my third round of ecstasy in her cozy embrace, the phone by the bed rang. Becky answered it breathlessly. Hello? Oh, hi, Dalla. Dick's a little tied up at the moment, but I can hurry him up for you. Give him about half an hour, just in case the train's running a little late. Becky hung up the phone and, with renewed energy, began working to finish what we had started. I held her close as she brought me to where I needed to be, and this time, I joined her for the finale. After a few moments when my heartbeat had returned to normal and Becky had rolled off me, I reached for the phone and called the number that had been mine just a couple of hours ago. Hello, Dalla nearly shouted, answering before the phone had finished its first ring. Is that you, Dick? Yeah, it's me, Dalla. Sorry, I couldn't get to the phone when you called, but I'm calling back now that I'm free, I replied smugly. What the hell is going on, Dick? Dalla demanded. You already had a place to stay, and your suitcases were packed before I even told you I wanted to separate. Then I call your number, and this bitch answers, practically admitting she's with you right now. Let's just say I didn't want to be caught with my pants down when you told me you wanted a separation. Being caught with my pants down a few minutes ago was far more enjoyable. And no, Becky's not stupid, at least I don't think so. But if it's important to you, I can ask her. I said, grinning and giving Becky's smooth backside a playful stroke. You bastard, Dalla spat. You said we weren't going to sleep with anyone else while we were apart. This is just a test. That's not exactly what I said. Dalla, I countered. I said if you sleep with someone else, we're definitely getting a divorce. I never said anything about myself. You're unbelievable, Dalla snapped. Why do you think you get to play by different rules? If you can sleep with whoever you want, then I sure as hell can too. Of course you can, Dalla. But I'm telling you, it'll lead to a divorce. I won't be a cuckold, I stated firmly. Then shouldn't we divorce right now since you already slept with her? Dalla asked, almost daring me. 
Maybe we should file for divorce on Monday morning. That seems fair, doesn't it? Not quite, Dalla. Hear me out. You're the one who decided we should separate, which meant I was taken from my partner against my will. You did this on your own. There's a huge difference. Plus, I made it clear I'd divorce you if you slept with anyone else. You never said the same to me, but if you want a divorce, go ahead and file. You have every right to. But I'm not sure I want a divorce, Dick. I just wanted a separation to think things over, Dalla said, her tone softening. Then there's no issue. We're separated. You got what you wanted, I responded. This isn't fair. Dalla whined. I didn't ask for this separation. I didn't want it. I wanted my wife and my life the way it was. You took that from me. I'm not going to do without love just because you've got some bug up your ass. But if it makes you feel better, you can come here three or four times a week, and I'll be faithful to you then. By the way, I'm not sleeping with every woman I meet either. What kind of separation is this, Dick? Dalla demanded. I've never heard of a couple separating where the woman still sleeps with the man all the time just to keep him faithful. It wouldn't even be a separation. I haven't read the separation manual yet, Dalla, but it sounds like I need to. What I do know is that I'm not letting this separation of yours keep me from satisfying my needs like our marriage already has. What the hell is wrong with you, Dick? I just wanted a simple separation to figure out if we should stay married. In a couple of hours, you've turned into some kind of sex-crazed maniac. Dalla shouted, I've never cheated on you, and now you're acting like this. I'm just finding myself right now, I said jokingly as I hung up the phone. And at the moment, I'm finding myself with a woman who seems very intent on keeping me satisfied. I've always been observant. It's in my nature, and it's helped me avoid surprises that others often fall victim to. Dalla, on the other hand, rarely noticed anything unless it slapped her in the face. She used to be vocal about the new dentist at her clinic, a man in the final stages of divorcing his unfaithful wife. In Dalla's opinion, he was a saint. But then, a few weeks ago, Dalla stopped talking about him altogether, and any questions I asked were dodged. It was as if the guy had disappeared off the face of the earth. As soon as Dalla stopped mentioning Dr. Burns, my curiosity peaked even more. To gather more insight, I had our phone tapped, her conversations recorded, and her emails redirected to me. On top of that, I hired a private investigator to dig deeper into the situation. The evidence painted a clear picture. Dr. Burns, who was in the midst of his own messy divorce, had set his sights on Dalla, trying to seduce her. It seemed this wasn't his first time either. Similar behavior had gotten him in trouble at his previous clinic, with even a few former patients accusing him of professional misconduct. The man was a snake. Thankfully, Dalla had resisted his advances up to a point, at least. She wasn't ready to betray our marriage by having an affair. However, Burns had started nudging her toward a separation, suggesting that if we were apart, sleeping with him wouldn't be cheating. That's why my firm warning to Dalla about not being intimate with anyone else was essential. If she had any intention of staying married to me, she'd have to keep her pants on. Becky, my colleague, had only been working with me for a few months, but we had quickly developed a close friendship. A widow who'd recently transferred to the West Coast to be closer to her family, Becky was well aware of my marital troubles with Dalla. When I shared my plan to force the situation with Dalla to head, Becky didn't hesitate to offer her help. She willingly volunteered to play the role of the other woman. Through listening to Dalla's phone conversations and reading her emails, I found out that Dalla was planning to bring up the idea of a trial separation on Friday. It wasn't hard for me to pack a couple of suitcases during my lunch break and move into Becky's apartment for the weekend. With two months left on her lease, we spent the weekend indulging in each other's company like we had no tomorrow. While I was prepared to keep an eye on Dalla and dump her at the first sign of any indiscretion with Burns, I wasn't going to be some cheating philanderer. I had been a loyal husband and father to our two children, both of whom had graduated from nearby universities and now had good jobs in neighboring states. If Dalla wanted to win me back, 
she'd need to make a strong case. I wasn't about to beg or grovel, and if we did stay married, things would never return to how they had been. I could no longer stand intermittent love. I was looking for a wife who would take care of me, and perhaps even surprise me occasionally. The placid, unpassionate life we had slipped into was irrevocable. My doorbell rang shortly after I got back to my flat, after dropping Becky off at the airport. To my surprise, there stood Dalla, tears streaming down her face. I led her inside and sat her down on the couch, waiting for her to gather herself. After a few minutes, she began to speak. Dick, I've been so stupid, Dalla started. I probably won't surprise you by telling you that Dr. Burns has been coming on to me for the last few weeks. You always seem to know more about me than I do. He convinced me to ask for a trial separation so we could, he said if we were separated, it wouldn't technically be cheating and that you'd even treat me better if I decided to come back to you. She paused, wiping her eyes. Things didn't exactly go according to plan. You were ready, your bags were packed, you had somewhere to go, and you even had someone to be with. Here I was, thinking I had a brilliant plan, but you were already a step ahead. When I called Friday night and heard that woman answer, practically confirming you were with her, it was like a punch in the gut. And then, when you called back, I knew exactly what you'd just been doing with her. That hurt, Dick. It hurt so much. Dalla took a deep breath, composing herself. I've spent the entire weekend thinking about what you said. Slowly, I realized you were right. I was the one who asked for the separation, not you. I had it in my mind that I'd spend a few nights with Ed Burns, and then everything would go back to normal, with you none the wiser. But you flipped the script. Suddenly, you were the one having an affair, with no guilt or remorse. If I had gone through with my plan, I would have destroyed our marriage. After hours of reflection, Dalla admitted she had seen the error of her ways. She understood that I wasn't the fool she had thought I'd be, and my swift response had turned the tables on her. This morning I told Dr. Burns he was out of line, Dalla concluded. So you just gave him a little scolding and expect me to forget everything? I asked, incredulous. Am I supposed to forget that you were willing to risk our marriage over a guy who just wanted to sleep with you? Dalla, you're an attractive woman. Plenty of men would jump at the chance to be with you. Do I have to worry about you every time a man shows interest? Dalla shook her head. No, Dick. But I wasn't the one who got rid of Burns this morning. When he showed up at work, the police were waiting for him. He was arrested, apparently. One of our patients accused him of sexual assault while she was under anesthesia. Once the investigation started, other women came forward with similar accusations. He's in deep trouble. That's the piece of garbage you were willing to risk everything for? I couldn't help but shake my head. I'm not surprised. The guy was sleazy from the beginning. But do you think that just because he's out of the picture, I'm going to forget what you did? No, Dick, Dalla said quietly. I was just hoping you'd keep your word. I've never lied to you, Dalla. I always keep my word. What are you talking about? I asked, confused. You told me I could come over a few nights a week and you'd sleep with me. You said it would stop you from needing to find other women, Dalla reminded me. I nodded, remembering our earlier conversation. I did say something like that. But I also told you things wouldn't be the same. You're going to have to put in some effort, not just lie there. I'm not interested in that, especially now that I've experienced how sex can be when both people are fully invested in pleasing each other. Dalla hesitated for a moment before speaking again. Maybe you can help me learn to be more responsive. At that moment, I realized my decision was clear. I loved Dalla, and though Becky was likely flying over Colorado with no plans of returning, I didn't want anyone else. It's a deal, I promised. There will be no other women as long as you are my wife. Dalla squealed in delight. I can't believe you're willing to give up that other woman for me, but I'm so happy you did. I promise you won't regret this decision. With that, Dalla pulled out some lip gloss, lubricant, and whipped cream from her purse, arranging them on the table.
Do you have a preference for which order we use these, honey? She asked, giving me a seductive smile. 